All right, everybody. I just wanted to do a quick bonus video for this week for our painting clouds, trees, and water class. Um, this is the black and white or grayscale cloud painting that we were working on in class. And I'm going to go ahead and glaze into it using transparent color. Um, here's kind of basically how I'm hoping it will sort of end up. Again, photos are always just reference points for me, just kind of a jumping off point. So I'm gonna start with my Indian yellow. Um, bring it down here. I'm gonna add just, just a touch of paint thinner to it. And I'm gonna scrub that on down along the horizon. So you can see the paint um, is already transparent. It goes on and then as I scrub it in or kind of push it around, it gets even uh, more transparent. So you want to look on the back of the tube, like this is the Quinacridone Red, and most good brands of paint will on the back tell you, here it says transparent. Um, it can be transparent, semi-transparent, semi-opaque or opaque which means you know you can't see through it, um, much more dense like uh, the cadmium paints. Um, generally when glazing, I will try my best, if, it, if the color works, to find good um, transparent colors. It just makes glazing that much clearer, you don't get fogginess. Um, all right, now I'm gonna look to the, uh, I kinda wanna go from yellow, orange, red, um, up towards purple. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out a little bit of this uh, orange here, which is called Orange Lake. Uh, it's a color I don't really know much about. I have a little tube of it that was um, given me to try. So let's just see what happens. It doesn't look too transparent. I'm gonna then let it get up towards the reds. Here I have a color vermilion. And bring a little touch of that vermilion down along the horizon as well. I'm gonna then switch over to a little bit cooler of a red. And I could do, you know, I don't have to get so intricate with all these different transitioning colors. I just thought this was a good opportunity for me to experiment and explore some of these different reds. Um, this is a, pen, um, what is it called? Uh, Paradine red, I believe, P-E-R-Y-D-E-N-E. Um, and typically what I would do is all of this with uh, quinacridone red and uh, Indian yellow and maybe a little bit of other color. Um, but I just thought, you know, let's experiment with some of our other reds that I never pull out of my drawer of paints. Might be a good opportunity. Um, I've heard the perline is kind of like a ketchup color is how I've heard it described. Kind of that warm but dark red. And that does kind of appear to be true. 
I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little of my quinacridone red, which is quite a bit uh, cooler of a red. And let's I'm gonna go ahead and grab some ultramarine blue and some little of the manganese blue. I haven't really cleaned my brush at all, so it'll probably turn a little bit purple as I scrub it in here. All right, looks crazy. Let's grab some paper towels. I like to use the blue shop towels. They hold up a little better, a little stronger. So now I'm just gonna wipe that paint away. And my hope is that it's kind of stained the surface. Okay, I've got a lot of red on there, so I'm gonna switch it to the other side so I can get back to the yellow. And get back to this yellow up here. The yellow is some of the areas I wanna keep kind of the cleanest, so. I definitely don't want this nearly so red, so I'll probably bring back in a little paint thinner because I want kind of a more, not hot like that, That's it looks crazy. So let's pull off a bunch of it. You can see that it's pretty quickly, it kind of gets in there and stains the surface. I'm gonna go ahead and bring some of that Indian yellow across and up. Let's get this a little more orangey. Finding a kind of a clean spot here. Always experimenting, always learning. Um, looks like I could have probably kept my values even lighter to um, be able to read the colors that much better. But let's keep exploring and experimenting and seeing what happens as I keep wiping back away.
And when I do the glazing, it's not a one-way track. I will oftentimes come back in with opaque paint. A lot of times this is just kind of a great way for me to test colors and to get kind of an under color going so that I get a sense of harmony throughout it. Sometimes it really works out great. What I did there is just kind of wipe in some, a little bit of paint thinner, which will allow me one more chance to kind of come back in. I'm hoping the grays that are up here will start to appear quite blue in contrast to some of the other colors that are around them. I'm going to try rubbing some yellow, some of the Indian yellow up a little higher to, so it's not just a band of color. Try bringing some opaque paint down. Let's simplify this sky, get it to go a little gray, blue gray. So it kind of contrasts off those warm.
There we go, it's starting to feel a little more harmonious. Took a second to kind of come around. But that's a nice thing, you've got a while you can keep working on it and pushing and pulling and seeing as things materialize. Now I'll bring some opaque paint across the top here to kind of warm up and lighten some of these clouds that are coming across the bright area of the sky. So to cool these clouds down as I'm going up, I can actually add a little bit of white. We'll kind of cool them down white as, you know, I treat like a temperature. Continue to cool it down as I get a little further up. So I'll use a slightly cooler red and again some white to make it go towards pink.
<clears throat> just kind of slowly just bending the colors a little bit, adding a little more density to the paint, a little more opacity, and just kind of seeing, stepping back, kind of judging, seeing how it looks, seeing if it could use more or less. I can always wipe it back away a little bit if I need to. make sure that it feels like the lights really kind of coming up from down here losing intensity as it goes up but retains you know enough intensity let's also add some dark blue green down below shall we to uh, stain our ground plane. Oops, quite red. Just add a little more front ultramarine there. down the ground plane there probably too much so we'll just kind of come back and wipe some of that away all right I'm gonna add some opaque color in the background now Let's see if I got a nice small brush I can clean off real quick there we go now put a purpley mountain back there. Let's see. warm up near the near where the sun is setting Let's bring in some more green, a little lighter, as, in, as if some of the vegetation in these rows are picking up a little bit of that nice warm yellow light that's kind of just beginning to raise back behind those hills.
as well. of these trees that are kind of poking up into the sky a little bit. I'm also going to Warm up that area of the mountain next to the sun. Just one more touch. Bring in some very dark green into those trees, kind of purple background, but just a little bit of, give a little bit of break up of color into those. Not much, just takes a hint. back a little bit of this blue back towards the gray that's underneath just a touch And that kind of does it for right now. I'll probably let that sit and then I could probably come back in and bring in some highlights um, into the sky itself. Okay, let's just go ahead and do that. Grab a small brush again. So I like to paint from big shapes to little shapes. So now I'm getting to the small, fun little detail stuff. Let's just, we're gonna bring some of that warm, nice light up and into the sky. So we've got our light down here, nice and strong. lights up here in the sky now it's going to be on the base of these big clouds
So just kind of creating transitions in the light and warmth as the light racks up and around and through the clouds. All right, I will stop here because I like to take little breaks and look at it, get fresh eyes and see what kind of craziness I've made. Um, but anyways, I will post this to the class page and uh, let me know if this was helpful and just post in the comments questions you may have about what I was doing there. But anyways, glazing using transparent paint over a black and white acrylic sketch. Thank you for watching.